Hey everyone, in a previous video we had disassembled this Glock 26 Gen 4 9mm for cleaning and inspection. This was disassembled to the extent that one would for a standard cleaning of this firearm. The slide was also cleaned and oiled as part of this procedure. Also in and around the firing pin, the safety and the extractor. No further disassembly of the slide was conducted on the basic cleaning of this firearm, but I've been asked to do so. So we're going to make another video just dealing with the disassembly, cleaning and reassembly of the components in the slide. Adding a towel again for better viewability. And of course, just as before, the first thing we wanna do is make sure this firearm is unloaded this happens all the time. People are not checking to make sure these firearms are unloaded before they clean them. So first I'm going to drop the magazine. And then I'm going to pull back the slide and lock it open. We'll have a look through and we can see clear through to the bottom to the towel. We could see into the chamber. Everything is clear. This is now safe to work on. For removing the slide, I'll rack it back once and then pull the trigger. Using my thumb to grab the rear of the grip, I hold the slide and pull back just a couple of millimeters. Pushing these buttons down releases the slide. I bring it forward and separate the two pieces. We won't be working on the receiver in this video. I put it off to the side. I now depress the recoil spring assembly to disconnect it from the barrel and remove it from the work area. We're not going to be working on this. And then the barrels push forward and lowered and then back out. Removing this from our work area, we're not going to be working with this either. If you haven't seen part one, the original cleaning video of this Glock, click the link in the top right corner, we'll take you to it. Now left with our slide, which will now disassemble. Using an appropriately sized drift, I'm going to push down on this plastic piece right here. What that does is pushes down here and relieves pressure off of the slide cover plate. So with my thumb firmly on the slide cover plate, I push down on that plastic piece to relieve pressure. And when that plastic piece is pushed down, I push the plate forward slightly. And with my other finger, I pull it out with my thumb still covering it because there are spring loaded items in here that would shoot out if I didn't. And now we could see those two pieces and that'll be our firing pin assembly and our extractor depressor assembly. So now I push the firing pin assembly straight up and out of the rear of the slide, just like that. And we'll put this off to the side. And with my fingernail, I grab the end of the extractor depressor assembly and pull that entire unit out of the slide as well. Here's the firing pin safety. There's a relationship between this and the extractor. You can see as I push it down, the extractor should be able to fall out, but sometimes you have to wiggle it, especially if there's a lot of crud. So as I push it down, we can see the extractor came loose. I flip it over it and that safety just fell out just like that. And with the safety now gone, the extractor falls right out the side of the slide or just pulls right out, just like that. We'll now use the slide as a brace to disassemble the firing pin assembly, putting the firing pin assembly in backwards, not aligning the firing pin as it was, but slightly off center as we see here. This will allow us to push down on the spring, relieving tension on these spring cups. These are very much like keepers that you would see on valve springs on a car engine. So we remove both these spring cups and then we could relieve the tension on the spring, lifting it up and off. We'll show it from the side again, the spring pushed down, these two cups removed, and then we can lift tension off of the spring, just like that. Now we can remove our firing pin assembly from the slide. And with that, finally, we can remove the black plastic channel liner, sliding it right off. And that's our firing pin assembly. The extractor depressor assembly is actually three pieces. I treat it as one piece. Notice black up top is for nine millimeter. The safety has a permanently attached spring. We're gonna clean this and check it for any damage. If there's any damage, it will be replaced. This extractor is actually really dirty. We're gonna clean it up and check this for damage as well. I start off by checking these areas with a cotton swab and that cotton swab broke immediately. I'll try another cotton swab and dirt in these areas is apparent. The question is going to be how much. So we're gonna start by cleaning these recesses through here in all possible directions with the cotton swabs. And I am picking up some dirt and I'm gonna speed a lot of this cleaning up. But I will stop and slow down to review what I find. As we see here, things are looking pretty dirty. Swapping out the Q-tips as needed. I'm also seeing what looks like little flakes of metal particles. 
I'm going to use some hops number nine in this area because this is really filthy. This should help it along. So everything's going to be saturated with the cleaner. And then it's going to continue to be cleaned out until all the debris is gone. Also working from where the safety sits, you could see where the safety meets the extractor as I push the Q-tip through. But if you're having failure to extract issues, dirt around this area could be a culprit. Cleaning around the firing pin area as well, now that there's no longer a firing pin here. And finally, I do a test and everything is now clean in this area. Looking pretty good. Took a while. There was a lot of dirt here. Considering that this was just cleaned, obviously not these areas, but the gun was just cleaned, we find what we're actually leaving behind. Now I'm running a Q-tip into the channel where the firing pin sits to see what we're looking at. And there is a lot of dirt and debris in here, so we're going to continue on and have a look. And I do see the reflection of some minute metal particles in here. You see that? So I'll keep going with multiple Q-tips till I'm confident that the area here is cleaned out. Now we're looking pretty good. Taking this opportunity to clean the front where the firing pin sits. There's no firing pin to obstruct the cleaning here. And we see that there's dirt coming off probably just behind that hole where a Q-tip cannot reach in regular cleaning. So we're getting that now. And using canned air, I'm going to blow out all these areas where the Q-tip was to ensure any debris is removed, any cotton from the cotton swabs. And that should be sufficient for the cleaning of the slide. This is hard to do with my camera and a light, but I do inspect within that channel. We can see I have just a bit more work to do to clean things up in there. But now I'll wet a patch with some hops number nine and use that to clean the safety. And I'm not turning by the spring. I'm holding it from the other end. It's just awkward because I don't want to grab the spring, but this thing's really dirty. We can see there's actually more metal flakes here on the patch. But I continue cleaning. And I can already see that everything is looking good on this safety that will take a closer inspection now that it's finished and this piece is serviceable. Moving on to the extractor depressor and this is actually very clean except for the piece closest to the actual extractor it has a little bit of dirt on it so I'm going to clean that up and this piece looks absolutely fine not a lot of work here to do. The extractor itself is absolutely filthy so I'm going to go several rounds here speed things up and just clean all of the debris off of this, all the accumulation that's formed on here until it's nice and clean. And that took quite a bit of work, but now the extractor is all cleaned up. So we'll have a look, especially at the end here. We want to make sure that this claw does not have any nicks or breaks in it, and it is nice and sharp and nice and even. And I could see that it is, and I feel that it is. So this extractor is still serviceable. Finally, the firing pin, and this had its fair share of debris on it, especially towards the front. So the whole firing pin is cleaned, all these little recesses and what have you around the actual end of the pin itself. And you can see those metal flakes, probably little tiny parts of somewhere on this pin, I would think. Most likely happened during break-in or whatnot. I don't see any issues with this firing pin. Looks very nice and serviceable, so we're going to move on. The firing pin spring is mostly clean. I'm just hitting it really lightly to remove some of that dirt that you see coming off of it. Just a light amount of dust on the spring, just touching it up. Followed lastly by the channel liner, just a light cleaning and not too much debris on here. And this is what we removed from a firearm that was just cleaned, having taken apart the slide. So we'll begin our assembly now, starting with the firing pin assembly. And none of these pieces are supposed to be oiled, but I don't want bare metal that's degreased. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of oil on my fingers, wiping them off on a towel, and just getting a little silhouette of oil on my fingers that I'm transferring onto the metal to give it just the lightest sheen. So I'm not really oiling it. I'm just putting a microscopic layer of that oil on the metal as we see. Reinstalling the channel liner now onto the firing pin. And just going over the spring with my fingers to transfer that light silhouette of oil onto the spring, I place the spring onto the firing pin as shown. Again, using the slide to secure everything in place so that I could safely put tension on this spring. And when I do, holding it in place, I could reinstall the spring cups one at a time. Not very difficult to do, a bit fidgety. And once they both go in, I can relax the spring and I can take a look. And what I want to make sure is, is that where the spring cups meet is not at the edge of the spring right here. 
If that's the case, I could just pull down pressure on the spring and rotate the spring cups about 30 degrees as one unit to solve that problem. This is good, so I'll move the whole firing pin assembly off to the side. More oil applied to the hands and then wiped off so I could apply that minute amount of oil to the surface of the extractor. So I just move it around in my hands until it's evenly coated. And I do the same thing with the safety along with the spring, trying to get in between here where it's thinner metal. We can see this recess where the extractor fits and this hole on the left side of it. And on the extractor, we could see where that nub would fit in there. So we place it in there now and it is seated just like that. With the extractor in place from the top, I drop in the safety spring first and we see it will push the extractor out a bit as I do so. I push the extractor back in and as I push down the safety holding the extractor, they both lock into place just like that. I push down the safety again to check and now they're fitted together. Demonstrating again how this should come apart if it's not filled with dirt, simply pushing in the safety, the extractor drops out, flip it over and the safety falls out. That's how it's supposed to work. So now inserting the firing pin assembly until it is fully seated. I'll give a little bounce on the spring right there to check. Note that the firing pin doesn't budge. Very good. Putting a silhouette of oil now on the extractor depressor assembly. Very thin. I now reinsert it into the back of the slide all the way. Give a little push down. I now have a much wider drift suitable for the next task. I'm going to install the slide cover plate until it butts up against the firing pin assembly. Now pushing down the firing pin assembly with the drift, I'm able to install the slide cover plate just a little bit further as I give it a push. It now butts up against the extractor depressor assembly. Using my small drift, I depress the end of that all the way down, allowing me to slide the cover all the way shut, ending our slide disassembly. Checking the function between the firing pin and the safety, I try and push the firing pin forward, it does not budge. Pushing down the safety, we can see the firing pin is allowed to move forward. There's no binding in any of these pieces. I let it go and it no longer goes forward. Everything's working good. We get a good look at the pole at the end of the extractor and I could pull it slightly outward and we can see that there's no binding. That looks pretty good. Looking from the outside, everything here looks just fine on the extractor. Assuming the previous video was followed, everything's ready for assembly. The barrel goes through the slide up and in place just like that. We could see the barrel situated in place from the underside of the slide. And right over here is detent for our next step. Looking at it closely, it's a half circle. The recoil spring assembly is first installed in the front of the slide as shown. And then I depress the back with my thumb, making space to push it into that half circle detent in the rear. We'll zoom in and have a look at that. We see how it's seated. Now lining up the rails of the slide to the receiver. Once I'm sure it's lined up, I pull it all the way back, racking it back, and then depressing the trigger. We're now fully assembled. I tested several times for mechanical functionality, make sure it feels like everything is operating okay, depress the trigger, although I really want to take it to the range to make sure it's operating properly. And that concludes this video on the disassembly, cleaning, and inspection of the slide on this Glock 26 Gen 4 9mm. Hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?